That is Rob Schneider's kid, actually. And it would be L. Schneider, but he took her mom's last name, uh, L. King. X's and O's on Smash Hits WHGM. 846 on a Tuesday morning for weather forecast on the way. And we got one last traffic update, so stay tuned for that. Also on the way, Friday's a big event that the uh, Susquehanna Wildlife Society is being put on. That's why one of my favorite guests is here, the executive director of that, uh, Scott McDaniels here. Good morning, Scott. Thanks so much for coming back on the show. Good morning. Glad I appreciate you. you coming back. And you're one of the research assistants uh, for the uh, society. Emily Boucher, good morning, Emily. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, love to be here. Yeah, good morning. Welcome to come on. How are things going with the uh, Susquehanna Wildlife Society, Scott? Uh, it's going great. So we just got over... Uh, Big flood uh, that happened in our wildlife center, so we've been doing a lot of cleanup. Yeah, how thing um, is everything good? Yeah, we got um, most of the debris cleaned up. The community really stepped up and uh, has really helped us. And we had a, a big cleanup day, and everyone pitched in, and things are starting to level out a little bit. We've got some planning to do, and some some uh, some different things to work out uh, moving forward. But it, it's really cool that we. Um, we get to work in such an incredible giving community with people that really support us and uh, support their uh, their like local wildlife. Yeah, I saw a photo update. So you guys were posting on social media that people helping out in the community and getting out and actually, you know, helping out around there, which is awesome to see you do because you go out there and help out the community. Someone, you know, sees this animal or something, you guys can kind of get out there and help them out with that, right? Exactly. So we do a lot of rescues um, uh, and get calls from people that see wildlife that's in distress. And, and just last week, Emily and I went out and rescued a black vulture. Uh, not always everybody's favorite animal. Um, they like to, you know, vomit and eat dead things. Oh. How was that Emily? Sorry, Scott, to interrupt you, but I have to ask Emily. How was that? Um, it was pretty good, actually. Um, <laughs> was it a pretty easy capture? Uh, we had to head out there twice. First time around, the vulture was um was not not seen, but then we got a call later on saying um that the the uh, owners of the property had seen the vulture, and we headed back out and were able to capture him pretty pretty quickly and easily with the help of that um with the landowner who was able to kind of corner them and keep them contained until we got there. And finally we went and were able to get them in a carrier, get them to uh, our uh, vet and able to uh, hopefully get him the help that he deserves. Make him do, yeah, build it. Would you get like a net in and try to like capture him, throw it on there, Scott? Or how do you like... Get a vulture. Just a, just a painting drop cloth, like a you know oh. thick uh, blanket. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. It's the best way because you can kind of throw it over them and, and grab them. And then uh, Emily had a, a animal carrier and we put it in there. Oh, okay. She took it over to wow. the animal hospital in, in Abingdon. So it's nice. It's nice when it goes easy. I've had other ones where I had to chase them through the woods with poison ivy and oh. thorn bushes and. That's crazy. What you guys up to? And so uh, it's a ticking time bomb. When you pick them up, you're like, oh, is it going to vomit? Or is it going to let me actually rescue it? And, uh, yeah, because yeah, it doesn't know that you're there to help him and stuff. And, uh, I mean, from vultures, every type of animal. I know snakes are the big thing. There was something Copperhead you guys are up to. Uh, we're working on, right, Scott? Yeah, so we also uh, do a lot of research projects. So we do education and conservation uh, and then rescues, as I mentioned. But uh, research is one of our large components. And we've researched everything from uh, spotted turtles and wood turtles. We're starting a project on and then uh, we've helped Maryland DNR and Fish and Wildlife Service with bog turtle uh, research, which is a federally um, threatened species. Mm. Emily and I were out um, looking for bog turtles in Cecil County last week. It's really a rewarding experience. But uh, snakes are you know, not as cute as turtles and maybe less popular, <laughs> yeah. especially copperheads, our only venomous snake here in Hartford County. And our project is actually uh, a behavioral project, so it's meant to show um, whether or not these snakes are what people say aggressive, okay. so even defensive. So uh, our copperhead's a snake that is likely, when you step next to it, on it, or pick it up, is it likely to bite you? So we all know copperheads do bite occasionally because people do get bit. Um, they have to go to the hospital and that happens. Um, but... Uh, our project is trying to show that um, are they likely to do it and when are they likely to do it. Oh, so we I actually see. simulate uh, this. We have a permit with Maryland DNR to experiment with this. And we've uh, done, uh, I think, 67 snakes um, over the last uh, um, two years. And we actually take a boot on a stick and we step next to the snake and we step on it lightly not to hurt it and record what it does. Does it flee? Does it strike? Does it do nothing? And then Aye. we actually pick it up with a set of tongs as a glove on it and see if it actually strikes the glove. So... 
Um, yeah, thank God there are people like you studying that type of thing so we don't have to deal with that, you know, yeah. I mean, because there's things out there. Are you ever looking for volunteers to help you guys out? We are. Not so much with those kind of projects because they're a little more dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Um, we want more experienced folks for those types of things. But, yeah, certainly for our construction work, we're renovating our wildlife center. We're trying to get that open in the next year. Uh, a lot of work to be done there, everything from painting to construction. Uh, we're building an outdoor bathroom with a composting toilet um, in it to do kind of a demonstration of green technology. Um, and we're doing all sorts of really cool things uh, there. We're going to be doing exhibits and, and a classroom in, in the basement and a lot of cool things like that. So the next year is going to be really intense for us. Um, I'm now full-time with the organization, so we're putting a lot of energy forward. Um, got great volunteers, great energy, and um, we're going to keep going forward. So any support the community can give so us. things go to the uh, website for more information, which to make that simple, if you go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash smash hits WHGM, we'll have a direct link to get you to their actual Facebook page or website, and also a direct link to get you to their event, which is why you're here. So let's touch on that real quickly before you go. So Friday night is a big event. So where is that happening? So it's happening at the Wildlife Center. So okay. we're not open to the public yet, but we're open for special events like this. So uh, we want to do something a little different this year. And while we are a serious scientific uh, group, we thought it would be really fun to kind of take the wildlife theme and uh, step it up a notch, which is cryptozoology, which is kind of the study of these unusual, un- unseen, unknown to science creatures. So most famously, Bigfoot, oh. Sasquatch, <laughs> uh, Loch Ness Monster. Okay. Is, so the Chesapeake Bay has its own version, which is Chessy. Oh, um, okay. Um, Chessy. The, the Mothman of West Virginia. And like yeah. All these really cool things. So what we're going to do okay. is um, we have uh, the Chesapeake Mermaid, uh, who is... Uh, an incredible uh, person. She's going to come out. She's going to tell stories to kids about Chesapeake Bay. Um, and it's a real mermaid. So come out and see her. And and then after her, um, uh, local legend Bob Chance is going to talk about some uh, Bigfoot sightings um, over the years. And then we have Matt Lake, who wrote uh, the Weird Maryland and Weird Pennsylvania books. Um, he's going to come out and do campfire stories and talk about wow. all these uh, different uh, tales and, and we're going to have some maybe uh, Bigfoots walking around and uh, big feet. I don't know how okay, very um, cool. So there's going to be a lot of cool things happening um, on Friday. Uh, so obviously really Rain fun. and Shine Kids going to be inside. Tickets are on sale now. It's outside. Uh, so. It's going to be outside. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in a barn, you know, some of the things will be inside. But um, uh, people will walk around. They can see cool things. Oh, I see. Cool. Um, kids are free. Uh, adults are only $10. So tickets are, for sa- are on sale right now. We want people to um, come out and have a good time. Uh, just have fun with it and dress up. We'll have a little bit of a Can they get it the uh, day of? Uh, so we want tickets to be bought online. Okay. Um, unless someone contacts us ahead of time and says they're definitely coming, um, we want tickets to be bought ahead of time just so we have a gauge of parking and those types of things. So um, like I said, kids are free. Um, we want families out there having a good time. Um, costume contest for kids and adults alike. Um, Emily, you'll be dressing up? I will. I'm still debating on a <laughs> costume of choice, but uh, I definitely want to pick something a little bit more uh, on the wild side. So there you go. Tease people what you might see. So for more information, hit up our Facebook page, facebook.com slash smash it's WHGM. So, well, Emily, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, and uh, Scott, yeah, great great seeing you again. And thank you so much for coming on. And you brought in uh, a dirty fruit for me. What is yeah, this? Yeah, dirty fruit. So uh, <laughs> it's customary that when you're on the radio, you, you give the host a, um, a native fruit, which is a pawpaw. Okay. So this is a native fruit that grows. Um, I just made that up. That's not customary at all. But um, it's a delicious uh, fruit that kind of looks like a mango, but tastes kind of like a kind of like a banana, sort of. It's uh, very kind of sweet, but um, soft. Uh, these grow and they, they get ripe in the fall here in Maryland. So okay, so that's local our, to here. They grow on our site at the Wildlife Center. Um, the zebra swallowtail butterfly uses it as their host plant, so it's a really special plant wow. to our area. Um, they're delicious. Taste it. I'll don't, take it. Don't take too much. Um, some people are allergic. All so right. we want to make sure you can finish I'll take a phone and take a look at it. So it's on the inside that counts. So yeah. that's what you're telling me when it comes to that. So very cool. So again, more information, go to Facebook.com slash Smash Hits WHGM. we got a traffic update one last time on Smash Hits.